Yo. You. Welcome back to another TC Tucson video. Do you feel like the daylight savings has really been hurting your golf game? Well, Tyler and I definitely have been feeling that. It's hard to not feel that way with the daylight savings. It's hard if you're working, you get off work late like us, and then you really only have an hour of daylight. So we just wanted to offer y'all a couple of tips of what we try to focus on, mainly more of what I'm focusing on, I think. I don't know if Tyler's gonna be saying much this video, but we just wanna try and give y'all some helpful advice. Hopefully it's helpful. Hopefully it just gives you a few things to focus on as opposed to just going out there, wasting your time, just hitting balls just to hit balls. So we'll go into a few things that I really try to focus on when we only have an hour, maybe an hour and 15 to practice. So let's get into it. This is gonna be Taylor's video. The only thing I will say is Taylor's gonna go over the things that she's either struggling with and or working on. So take those, mold them into what you're struggling with, working on, hopefully she can teach you a few things. So let's head to the practice range. So unfortunately, because it is daylight savings, the range is already closing. So today we're gonna focus on short game, which is completely okay. You know, in an hour that you have in the afternoon, you're not gonna get everything done. But to me, what I really focus on is what am I struggling with the past week? What do I feel like has been lacking? Where could I improve? So. For me, yesterday I spent the day just really focusing on my swing. So if I were to be having issues with my swing, my thoughts, or my shots, which I tend to always feel like I do, you know, I'm gonna go to the range, not just hit balls just to hit balls. I'm not just gonna try and hit however many balls I can hit within 30 minutes. When I go, I'm going to focus really only on the clubs that I've been having a problem with. So just say you're hitting your four iron perfect, which I doubt, it's hard to do that. but. If you're hitting your forearm great, maybe it's time to focus on your shorter iron. So a lot of people want to stick with what's comfortable. A lot of people don't really work on changing their swing, trying to improve their swing where they can. They really just want to stick with what's comfortable, what will give them the highest chance of hitting those good shots. So for me, I don't focus more on the outcome of my shots. I focus really on, do I feel like I'm exaggerating the feeling that I need to in order to improve? So lately for me, I mean, I've struggled with this my entire life, but I've really been struggling with dipping. So on my swing, I'm just dipping my head a lot more than usual. I'm also kind of sucking it inside, which is seems like a never ending issue. So if I'm out in the range, I'm not just gonna be sitting there trying to hit balls. I'm gonna be working really on how could I feel like I'm staying up? How do I feel like I'm swinging out? So whether I pick a target that I can swing out to, or I really feel, my coach used to always say like my ponytail was being held up from the ceiling and it would hurt if I obviously dipped. So if I'm not hitting it great, that's okay. I really just wanna work on improving my swing because in the long run, having a consistent swing with you know, fewer bad tendencies or bad habits is going to help in the long run. So if you're gonna go to the range, don't just hit balls to hit balls. Really focus on one or two things that can really improve your consistency and a couple of things that you see are wrong in your swing. That kind of brings up another point how do you know what's wrong in your swing? So I should have the tools in my bag, but essentially Tyler and I always film each other and it is helpful that we have each other to film one another. I don't even think I have the tool in my bag because Tyler and I are always going together, but essentially they sell products and I can, we can always put it in the description. Um, they sell products to really put on alignment aids. So if you get an alignment aid, just like one of these orange sticks, it pops on and it holds your phone. That way you can record it from behind you when you're actually practicing. I am recording myself the entire time I practice. There is no better way to see what's going on in my swing if I'm not filming it. Really wanna focus on trying to actually see those improvements in your swing, not just hitting shots, just to hit shots. Yeah, and that kind of goes back to the last video. Feel is different than real. So you can yeah. feel like you're doing something on the range, um, but if you're not filming yourself to correct yourself, and you feel like you're doing something, you might actually be doing the opposite. So it's always really good to film yourself every once in a while. Yeah. Tyler, I think, even gets annoyed with how much I'm asking him to film me. But otherwise, I'm really not going to know if I'm hitting it well. So make sure you're trying to work on something when you're at the range and focusing on the clubs that you're having an issue with. This week, I feel like my swing has not been that bad. So I have been kind of lacking and not paying enough attention to my short game. So... Days like today, I'm really gonna focus on what yardages am I having a hard time with. I feel like I don't have the best feeling with 20 to 40 yard shots right now. So I'm gonna focus just on those, you know, hitting two shots from each is not going to really help me get a feel. So 
I chipped about 15 balls from each yardage. Not a ton, but given the daylight savings, it's enough just to give me a good kind of feeling of what I need for each yardage. So for me, focusing on what am I struggling with? I'm not really struggling with short shots, struggling with pitches. That's what I'm going to focus on today. Really focus on something that's going to improve and help you on the course. So let's go to the chipping green. So for me, I am a numbers person when I'm golfing. You know, I wish I could say I go based off of feel and I try to, but really I need to know how far I'm carrying it. I like to be able to imagine the swing per yardage. So for me, I'm not just going to try to chip it to the hole. I want to try to walk it off somewhere to where I would if I was on a course, try to land it to and let it release. So for me, focusing on 30 yards, I think if I were to land it right here to the hole, it should be a pretty good landing spot. So I would start walking it off until I hit 30 yards. You want to try to walk it like about a yard length. Who knows how accurate mine is, but since I'm walking off all my short shots, for me, it may not be actual yardage, but it's similar to what I'm always walking off. So walked off 30 yards, you know, if you're on a course, you can't tee up your chip shots. You can't always get good lies. So and for me, I feel like I don't often get that good of lies. For me, if I'm going to chip, I'm going to try to just kind of tap it. This one gave me a pretty good lie, but essentially you want to try to reenact what's going to happen on the course. It's going to roll out. It's going to possibly go in dips, possibly go in old divots. And that's really going to be the only way that you kind of get a feel for what to expect on the golf course. If you're used to, you know, any kind of lie, then when you get up to your ball and it's in a bad lie, you're not going to think, oh, great, here we go. I'm going to scold it. I'm going to chunk it. So this will just help you kind of get a better feeling for any kind of lie and just really improve your short game. So I know I need to land it kind of on the top of that hill, 30 yards. And it's short. So obviously that right there tells me I need to work on feeling it a little bit further back. That same swing is not going to do me any good. So you don't want to just sit there and do the same thing over and over. Consistency feels nice and being comfortable feels nice. But in the end, you need to get uncomfortable to feel comfortable. At least I think that's what the saying is. Someone on Peloton says it. <laughs> so that, like, like Taylor said, this is instant feedback. Um, you know, maybe she didn't take it back as far as she needed to. So and there we go. I said exactly what not to do. I hit it literally right next to that. Quit ball. being consistent. Do it right. So that one, you can see I landed it probably seven yards past my landing zone. So this is what I mean. You can see I'm struggling with this yardage right now. I need to work on this. I need to focus on this. And even if I'm hit 20 shots and I'm still struggling, I'm not going to move on and then just kind of count my losses. I'm going to sit here until I have a good feeling, until I feel I would be confident if I were to be in an actual encore situation right now. And that's really how you improve. You don't have to sit there and hit drives, hit tee shots, hit wedges, putt, go in the bunker, hit out of the rough. You don't have to try and get all that in in one practice session. It's just it's not reasonable to think that I mean, quality over quantity has always been true. So you don't want to sit out here for hours and hours trying to get everything. Yeah, especially with the time change, you can split your game up. If you're not struggling with something like Taylor said, split it up, work on what you are struggling on, get comfortable being uncomfortable, and get better. Yeah. So that's what I'm working on right now for chipping. If you're struggling with short shots, work on those short shots. If you know you're struggling with your putting, it doesn't feel great, like for me, my putting has not felt great. So I feel like my putting stroke is inconsistent. I'm not only pushing putts, but I'm also pulling putts. So for me, what I'm gonna focus on is just short putts, um, really focusing on my stroke, making sure it's exactly how I want it. I'm not gonna sit here and just start throwing balls down on the green and putting to any hole that looks like fun or trying to do fun putting games. I'm gonna have to make it a little bit more what people call boring, focus on the fundamentals and really just trying to get my stroke back to how I want it to feel. So for me, I normally like to do a chalk line. I'm not gonna do a chalk line just for the sake of time, but essentially you wanna kinda create this little gate with your putting stroke. So for me, I wanna feel like I'm taking it back mostly straight, but at the end I'm gonna kinda take it inside a little bit. 
So when I set up this gate, I'm going to go back. The T's all on the right will align, but my back one will be a little bit further out of my putter just to give me enough room to take it inside. And then going through, I want to follow through pretty straight. So I'll keep it mostly straight. Yeah, let me, let me get that. So Taylor's got six T's here and you try to find a straight putt, yes? Yeah. Okay. So you want to try to find a straight putt. That way you're not seeing the putt break and then you're trying to alter your stroke for that. So right here you can see I'll put the ball right in the middle. I'll set up. And I will just hit 25 to 50 of these. Really try to ingrain a feeling of going back ever so slightly inside and then just following straight through. Yeah, and this is, again, instant feedback, same way when Taylor was walking off the chip shots. If you're hitting any of these tees, you know that you're either taking the, the putter outside, you're taking it back perfectly and through, or you're taking it back a little inside. As you can see there, I mean, it's essentially a runway, right? It's not a super fancy putting thing. It's six tees. It does exactly what all the, you know, the fancy training aids are doing. But I see Taylor doing this all the time. She's got the best putting stroke I've ever seen. It's pretty much the same every single time this is how she does it yeah and like tyler said it's super easy to set up maybe you feel like you're a 10 footer as you're getting a lot of birdie chances but you're not making them or par saves you know i'll take this back all the way up to 10 feet and you could i'm sure do further than that um i'll do my chalk line pretty far back and even then just because your stroke is bigger you still want it to be pretty consistent and you still want to have the same putting stroke regardless of the length putt. Really important just to go back to the fundamentals sometimes. It's not always going to be fun. You can't always just play games. I wish we could because I don't consider this a lot of fun focusing on the fundamentals, but sometimes it's necessary just to get back to a good feeling and give you that confidence for the course. So we have a couple of videos for games to improve your lag putting. Tyler has a video that will be coming up about how to focus on lag putting. So just say you're having a lot of three putts, go check out that video see some of his tips for how to improve your lag putting but like the range and chipping don't just hit putts just to hit putts focus on what's giving you trouble is it your stroke short putts or is it your lag putting okay so just to recap i know i talked a lot not really much golf so hopefully i wasn't just talking on and on but really how to have quality practice when you are encountering daylight savings or any other kind of time constraint focus on what you've been struggling with don't just hit balls just to hit balls. Have something to work on. Make it meaningful. Quality will always outweigh quantity of how many shots you're hitting, putts you're hitting, everything. So really focus on what you're having an issue with and you'll see results start to happen. So hopefully you're able to take something away from this. This is just what I've done my entire life. When I was in school, I didn't have much time after school to drive up here, practice, get a full practice in. So hopefully you can take away some helpful stuff. Um, if you have any other kind of tips videos you want to see, please leave it in the comments. We love ideas from all of y'all. That really helps us learn what you want to see. Um, we appreciate all of your support. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Hope you enjoyed. And to all of those that have, that have been commenting and have been supporting us, thank you. As always, we really appreciate it. So hope you enjoyed and we will see you in the next video. Peace.